Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Richard and I'm the Bull Rider. And today I want to talk to you about the shift paddles that came on my Lamborghini Gallardo Superleggera. And if you're not familiar with the Gallardo, it came in two flavors. You have the automatic e-gear and the manual. And most Superleggeras came in the automatic slash e-gear system. But inherently the transmission underneath is basically the same. So the only difference is that instead of using the stick, you have two paddles behind your steering wheel. And the problem with these paddles is that they're so small. I sometimes have trouble finding the right gear when I'm taking a left turn and I, and I want to shift up into the next gear. Um, I, I can't sometimes find the paddle because they're so small. And the problem is I can't really find a solution to this problem anywhere. They used to sell an aluminum paddle um, on the forums and um, online, but that's no longer available and, and I can't find it anywhere or buy it anywhere. And there's another gentleman in Europe that sells shift paddles. I can't really find his website and it looks like it's a aluminum paddle with uh, carbon fiber wrapped over the top of it. So I thought it might be fun to make a full carbon fiber shift paddle straight from scratch. So this is what I have so far, and uh, this is what I'm gonna show you how I'm manufacturing today. And you can see the, just the huge size difference that the uh, stock paddle has comparative to the one I'm manufacturing. And it's a little bit lighter too. And this is called a forged composite. It's also known as a compression molded composite. And basically what it is, is you get a bunch of tiny little chopped carbon fibers maybe the size, maybe half an inch long, and then it gets bonded in a epoxy matrix. Depending on how I angle this in the light, it changes like with every single facet, you get a different angle um, and how it bounces off the little tiny carbon fiber pieces. And I just think it looks absolutely stunning. So to make this, we have a female mold, right? And this, the shape on the inside of here matches directly to the shape of what the paddle is actually gonna look like. And then we have a male mold and the male mold matches the top profile of the paddle. And then what we do is we fill this with carbon fiber inside of here, and then we smush the two together, and then you let it cure for a couple days, and then you take everything apart, and then you're left with this wonderful, beautiful piece of composite engineering. So let's briefly go through every step, and I'm excited to show you how this is made. So the first thing we need to do is CNC machine both the female molds and the male molds. And the, really the most important thing with this is making sure that we have a good surface finish on both the surfaces that are gonna be in contact with the carbon. And if we don't, it's gonna show up in our part once it's cured. And you might ask, why don't I just 3D print these molds? And I really got a bad surface finish out of doing this. So I tried it and it didn't work for me. So we're onto the CNC machine. And then we have to post-process these molds. So what we do first is we coat them in epoxy and this provides like a really hard surface finish. So when we go to actually lay up the paddle, the epoxy doesn't seep into the actual mold itself. Then we have to put on the mold release on all surfaces, and this really allows us to disbond it after the uh, paddle is cured. So really important step and be sure to do that. And now we can lay it up. And I use uh, both a long strand fiber, about half an inch, and then I use this like one eighth inch stuff for any sort of areas where I had a higher void content in uh, previous revisions. And this gives me a good blend between surface finish, strength, and void content. So I'm pretty happy with the formula I have right now, and it's pretty good. I also made this little plastic layup tool so all the carbon fiber I put in dry doesn't um, fall all over the place and, and just make a huge mess. And now I can put the carbon fiber in and I have to alternate between epoxy and carbon fiber. And the carbon fiber has to go in dry because if I put it in wet, like let's say I mix the epoxy and the carbon fiber together, it just turns into this like big blob of carbon and um, I don't get the surface finish appearance that I like. So that was a tough lesson to learn. And it looks kind of like a mess at this point, but what we're going to do is we're going to take the male mold and we're going to compress it onto the female mold and um, really put a lot of clamping pressure on this, um, making sure that we get good consolidation between the male mold and the female mold. Because this manufacturing method really relies upon a compaction to get a really high strength, good and viable part. So that's probably one of the most important steps. And then once we're cured, we can go ahead and delaminate the paddle. Yeah, it just takes a hammer and a, a screwdriver and a little bit of patience and it comes right apart eventually. So this is what it looks like coming right out of the mold. Overall, pretty good. Um, what I did was remove all the excess epoxy that was uh, laminated around it. I still have a little bit of work to do. You can see some over here that I need to take off. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to put it back onto the CNC and then cut down this part to uh, actually interface with the OEM um, mounting points and everything like that. And then I made this simple little fixturing mechanism where you get the paddle and then it can sit right inside of that groove just like that. And then you can get the other one 
and then you have two more to further constrain it. That'll work. And then we have bolts that can go all the way through the side of it. And I'm having issues when it comes to actually post-processing this paddle and the surface is not turning out like perfectly straight. Maybe them being off by a couple uh, degrees or something like that and it, it not fitting at the end of the day. So um, I'm still working on that and this is what I have the best so far, but I think I just need to do a lot more research and really figure out what I need to do. So this is what it looks like coming out of the CNC machine for the first machining op. And you can see there's a little bit of material that we need to cut right here. And then you can see this hole that we need to machine. So it'll actually mount to the mounting hardware. All right, now we're on to the side machining step. So we have a fixturing mechanism again, and then a top cover plate. Now we can cut out the side profile and also drill the hole with the drill bit. So this is what it looks like after post-processing it. Um, overall, it looks pretty good, but I'm really, really, really struggling when it comes to actually installing it in this housing. Um, so this little part is supposed to fit in here, and there's supposed to be a lot of play in here, like you can see. And then we have the actual uh, trigger switch, and then you have like this little rocker mechanism. So it's supposed to fit in here just like this. You push it back and then it falls into place just like that. And you can also see how there's like a little bit of angularity on that dowel. So the paddle doesn't want to sit in there nice and flush. And I think it has to do with my fixturing mechanism because you can see how this end is poking out just a little bit. And then when I pull back on the paddle, it's supposed to hit this little uh, button, um, but it's just not doing that. And I'm having just really a hard time um, figuring out what is wrong with my machining process. So even if this doesn't actuate properly, I still want to show you what it looks like at the end of the day. And I think you'll be really happy with, with how it looks like and what it turns out like. And the last step is throwing on a high build UV stabilized epoxy. So when it's in the car, the epoxy doesn't fade over time due to like exposure in the sun. And what's really cool is this stuff is really thick. It's almost like the consistency of a like syrup or something like that. And what it does is it, it like really builds up on the top of the surface and uh, really leaves this like nice shiny sheen on the top and it kind of also accounts for like any sort of surface imperfections in the actual paddle itself too. So this is what it looks like after we let that UV stabilized epoxy cure and um, it just looks absolutely amazing how it builds onto the paddle and um, you can see the carbon in every little facet of the light. I just think it looks absolutely amazing and if it wasn't for the issues in post-processing we would have a fully functional paddle um, ready to go onto the car. So it's gonna be something that we need to work on. And I know I get better with every revision, but it's just kind of discouraging, like going to the last step and, and having something be messed up or something like that. And it's just, it's just a little bit discouraging at the end of the day. And you know, I'm, I know I'm gonna figure it out, but it's just kind of hard to keep going and going and going. And I, I really think I need to rethink this before I make another revision again, because, because this isn't working. And, I, th I think I need to do something different. So I'll keep you in the loop on what I find out, but um, this is where I'm at right now, and I hope you like this video. Thanks.